All right, in this video, we're going to do problems 21 and 22 in your book. Um, these problems look incredibly complicated. Um, that's just the way I wrote them. They're actually really, actually pretty easy. Um, I'm going to show you why they're uh, way easier than what you probably would do if you're trying to do this problem on your own. It says the following three cars all crash into each other at the same time and they stick together. What is the final velocity of the heap of metal? So they're all coming in, they're colliding, it's demolition derby, they're all colliding into each other at the same time, and then they stick together. So before the collision, there are three different objects, and then after the collision, there's only one object. And we know that the momentum has to be conserved. And uh, you might think, well, we need to calculate the momentum of all three cars first, and, and you'd see that the, the weights or the masses of the cars are in tons and the velocities are miles per hour, and you might think, oh, we're going to have to convert all those to meters per second and to uh, kilograms. You do not have to do that, because what are we doing? We're doing conservation of momentum problems. So um, if we're doing conservation of momentum problems, um, momentum is on both sides of an equal sign. So it doesn't really matter what your uh, units that you're using are, like tons and miles per hour, um, because it's going to be on both sides of the equation. So, um, yeah, your, your uh, momentum units would actually be like 10 mile per hour. So it's kind of weird, but you don't have to change those because all we're doing is we're, gonna, we're not actually using an equation. We're using a, um, a conversion, uh, a con conservation thing. Okay, so uh, what we do need to do is figure out the momentum vectors, components of each one of these things. And you could draw this out in a grid, but we're not even going to do that because I gave you the angle I gave you from north for all three of them. So we're going to go back and revert back to what we remember about vectors, that the i hat is always going to be the, the, uh, um, the momentum vector times the sine of the angle, and the j hat will always be the momentum vector times the cosine of the angle. And so we don't have to worry about uh, what small angles we have are in there at all or something like that. Okay. All right. So uh, for the blue car, uh, for the blue car, um, we're going to have uh, the, the vector should be, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the momentum? 5 tons times 100 miles per hour. That's 500. So uh, the, the blue car is going to be 500, the I hat, will be 500 times the sine of 190. That'll be I hat. Okay, and then uh, plus 500 times the cosine of 190 would be the uh, would be the j hat so that's the blue car uh, the red car the red car um, is going to be see six times 65 is 390 so 390 sine of uh, 102 i hat plus 390 uh, cosine of 102 j hat okay all right and then the green car, 10 times 45 is 450. So we got a green car. It'd be 450 times the sine of 43 is my i hat, uh, plus 450 cosine of 43 is the uh, j hat. So those are all the uh, all the different components. And um, if we uh, write those out and do the, do the calculations again. Um, we'll just do the calculations out here. Um, I already kind of did them. You can check in your calculator, make sure you get the same thing I do. But for that blue car, it was a negative 86.8 um, I hat and a negative 492.4 um, J hat. That was the blue car. The red car, um, was a uh, plus 381.4 um, I hat and a minus 81.1 uh, J hat. And the green car um, calculated out was a plus 307 I hat and a plus 329.1. Uh, J hat. So those were all your uh, momentum components of all three cars. Now they're gonna they're gonna crash together, and um, they're gonna give me uh, um, 
one, one heap of metal. And I want to figure out what all three of these momentum vectors are added together. So um, I could take 307 plus 381 minus 86.8, and I get a plus 601.6 i hat. And then I could take 329.1, take 329.1 minus the 81.1 minus the 492.4, and I would get a, uh, a minus 244.4. Uh, J hat. So that's the total total momentum. So that'll be the total momentum of the object at the end. Also, this is these are all the momentums. We, these three things here are the momentums of each of the components before. So if I add them all up, I would get a total momentum, and that total momentum needs to be conserved afterwards. So this here is going to be the total momentum components of the uh, vehicle um, at the end. Okay. So um, I could draw a, a triangle here. I could do a It'd be a 601.6 over and a, uh, it looks like a 244.4 J hat down. And this would be my resultant, um, my resultant momentum vector of the three car mashup. So I could figure out the angle right now. These are momentum vectors. I figure out the angle right now. I could do the tangent of that angle would equal 244. 0.4 over 601.6. And if I do that, I get an angle in here of uh, 22.1 degrees. Okay, if I do Pythagorean's theorem on, uh, on this uh, 601.6 and on this 244.4 to get uh, this momentum total momentum vector side right here, if you do Pythagorean's theorem on that, you should get... Um, 649.3. So I have a momentum vector of 649.3. Um, a momentum vector of 649.3 at 22.1 degrees uh, south of east. I want the velocity uh, vector. See, it says what is the final velocity of the heap of metal. Um, so I need to just take this uh, momentum here and I need to divide it by the total total mass of the whole thing. Uh, what was that? Well, we had a, a 5 ton, a 6 ton, and a 10 ton car. So if you add them all up, you're going to get 21 tons. So I need to take this momentum here and divide it by 21 tons. So I take 649.3, divide by 21 tons to get my, uh, my speed. And my speed then would be um, 31 meters per second. So the total velocity, written correctly, would be 31 meters per second um, at uh, 90, let's see if I did a grid here and I did 90, 90 plus the 22.1 would be at basically 112 degrees, 31 meters per second at 112 degrees uh, below. So that's the answer to this first question. That'd be the velocity of the three car mashup um, at the end. So the follow-up question on this is, uh, what was the percent kinetic energy loss in the problem above? Okay, and since also percent loss, um, this is percent loss, it's percentage of, there's again no reason to convert uh, units. Uh, you remember uh, one half mv squared is the units for kinetic energy, and if we want that to be in joules, the mass has to be, uh, this has to be in kilograms, and the velocity needs to be in meters per second. But we're not actually figuring out kinetic energy in this problem, we're figuring out what's the percent of kinetic energy that's lost. So again, we don't have to use them in these regular units. If you were going to figure out actual kinetic energy, yes, you'd have to convert these. But if we're just doing a percent loss, we're going to have these units on both sides anyway, so um, it won't matter. So uh, what's the kinetic energy uh, before before the uh, uh, collision? Well, uh, there'd be three different kinetic energy we had to figure out. So um, we would have... Uh, um, let's see, one half mass of the first car was five, velocity of the first car was 100 squared, plus uh, one half of the uh, next car was uh, the mass was six, and the velocity of that was 65, that'd be squared, plus uh, one half the mass of the last car was 10, times the velocity of the last car was 45 squared. You have to add, do all that up. 
and figure out what the kinetic energy is uh, for that. Um, if I did my math right, I got 47,800. Uh, and I won't put joules because it's some weird unit because these are tons and miles per hour. So it's not actually joules, but I won't put the unit down. I don't really even know what it is. So uh, kinetic energy after. What's the kinetic energy after? Well, it's a little easier to figure out because there's only one object now. It's a big mashup. And it would be one half times the total mass, which was 21, times the velocity, which we figured out was 31 miles per hour squared. And I get 10,090 for that one. So um, I need to get the percent kinetic energy loss. So I'm going to take the energy before, 47,800 before, minus the energy after, 10,090, to figure out how much energy we lost. And I'm going to take that as a percentage of how much we had uh, before. And I'll take it times 100. And if you did it all right, you should get like about 80%. 79, 79%, we lost a ton of energy in this, uh, in this problem. So 79% energy lost, and that's how you do those two problems. Hopefully it was actually easier than you uh, would have thought. Um, we didn't have to do a grid and do all the angles and convert all the units. Um, we can do it uh, fairly easily. I'll put a QED on that. QED, that was worthy.